Income tax 2021-2022 software example, interest you paid. Get ready to get refunds to the max, diving into income tax 2021-2022. We'll assert tax software. You don't need tax software to follow along, but you might want to have the Form 1040, which you could find on the IRS website at irs.gov, irs.gov, starting point, single filer, Adam Smith, living in Beverly Hills, 90210, 100,000 at the W-2 income. We got the 12,550 standard deduction, getting us to the 87,550 on the taxable income, mirroring that in our income tax formula, the 100,000, 12,550 taking the standard deduction 87,450 taxable income jumping back on over to the software page two calculating the tax on line 16 15 15 that tax being calculated bringing that on over this is going to be then the tax of the 15015 so that's going to be our starting point we're looking at interest now so i'm going to go back to page one on the taxes and we're going down to line number 12. We're taking the bigger of the standard or itemized deduction. Standard deduction currently being larger. And two of the big ones, as we've seen in prior presentations, to push people over will often be related to the home purchase. That being interest for the mortgage interest if there's a loan on it, as well as the uh, property taxes. So that's the first one we'll think about with interest. Now, there's other things you, that could be involved with, with the interest as well, like investment interest, for example. But the big one that you want to keep in mind is, of course, the mortgage interest. Once then you're over the cap, once you've cleared the standard deduction, most likely with the home purchase and the interest related to it and the, stand, and the property taxes, then that opens up the field possibly for other uh, itemized types of deductions so if i open up the item on the left hand side we're going into the schedule a and we're scrolling down to the uh interest so we're looking at the interest generally here in line eight and we're focused mainly on the mortgage interest at this point now usually the interest is going to be fairly straightforward because you'll get the form you'll get the form 1098 and that's going to be coming from the institution and so you'll have the mortgage interest typically in line one generally straightforward type of process with the mortgage interest then however you can have situations for example where the the amount of the loan say was higher than the threshold where you have to get into a little bit more in the weeds in terms of the deductibility of the interest portion the the amount is fairly high seven hundred and fifty thousand in general at this point in time in terms of the loan amount not the home value not the amount of interest but the loan value so that's pretty significant for most people but you can it depends on you know who you're doing the taxes for in terms of who might hit that limit there also what did they use the money for was it used for then basically the improvement or purchase of the home in general so you want to keep into consideration those kind of limitations but uh, once taken into consideration, usually this form will be fairly straightforward, helping us to do the data input for the interest. So let's think about the interest first. So I'm going to go back on over and say if I go back to the forms and we're going to go into the, the deductions here, we're going to go to the itemized deductions and we're going to be picking up, we're looking at interest. Now, as I interest the interest down here, I'm always going to be thinking in the, in the back of my mind, well, I see this form which represents they got a home loan typically. So then I'm also going to be thinking about the property taxes. They should most likely have property taxes, which is another significant item. So let's say that the home mortgage interest reported on the schedule on the form 1098 was, let's say, a 7,000, 7,000 there. If I go back to the forms, then I could see that the Schedule A is still not being populated or is not greater than the standard deduction with just that 7,000 uh, reported here. I also have then the state taxes. Now, this is a state tax that I put on the W-2. I'm going to take that out for now. I'm going to go back on over and go to my income. So I'm not focused on these state taxes for the W-2. Let's take a look at it again. So we all we have then is that 7,000 and then the state tax calculated on the the rate for I believe this would be the sales tax kind of tables calculation we looked at in prior presentations but you would expect then even without substantial state taxes that were related to state income taxes or sales taxes that you would have property taxes too which could 
help to push over. So if I went back on over and then said, oh wait, they've got property taxes now, going back into the taxes line and looking at the real estate taxes, which would be here. And let's say that was 5500, for example. And note that the real estate taxes may have been something that you've kind of set up to pay out with uh, the loan or the financial institution that you have the loan from. So therefore, when you get the 1098, you might they might provide you the information that they're paying for the property taxes as well but you don't have that same kind of requirement meaning this 10 this form 1098 is for the reporting generally of of uh, the mortgage interest it just might so happen that you kind of are going through them to to help out to kind of package together the payment of the property taxes so they might provide that information for taxes as well if not then you might not get a document for property taxes you would have to just go to the standard bill you would be getting the bill for the property taxes and different areas might have different tax systems for property taxes they might tax it you know generally like twice a year and then when when they actually issue the bill uh, it could vary depending on where you are at Typically, you're on kind of a cash basis system, so it would be when you paid the bill, although there could be restrictions to basically prepaying uh, too much in advance and so on, trying to kind of game the system by, by, by prepaying a bunch, for example. But that's the general idea. So you might, you might have it reported by you to you by your financial institution, or you might just have to pick up the property tax bill that you're paying to whoever the entity is you're paying the property taxes to. So that's something that as a preparer, you should just, it should just kind of trigger in your mind. You're gonna say, oh, I, I see that you own a home, or I see that you own the home from the fact that you have the mortgage interest. I assume that you own the home, and then I'm gonna follow up with the question on the property taxes to make sure that we're picking up that one because that's the other kind of big one that along with Basically, the state taxes might then be enough to push us over, in this case, the 13379, pushing us over the threshold. So now if I go back to the first page of the Form 1040, we're at the 13379 instead of the standard deduction at the 12550. We can mirror that on our schedule over here. We could say we got the 100,000, and then I could say, let's go to the itemized deductions. And we said that we had then the taxes. Let's go to the interest first. And we said the interest, I think, was... I said 6,000, did I say? Let's go back on over. I forgot, I forgot 7,000 on the interest and 5,5 five on the taxes. So 7,000 on the interest, taxes on the property taxes. We said we're 5,5 five, and that opens up the ability to take either the state taxes or the, the state taxes or the sales tax. I'm letting the system calculate the sales tax at the 879 at this point. So we're going to say 879 and so that adds up to the 13379 pulls over to the first page of the 1040 so now the 13379 is greater than the 12550 therefore we're itemizing as opposed to standardized the taxable income now 100,000 minus the 13379 is the 86621 let's check that out on the tax return so scrolling down 86621 is that what i said 86621 yeah Page two, letting the software do the tax calculation, 14811, 14811, 14811, 14811. So there we have that. Now notice that when you got the property tax, it's kind of coupled in with that. There's that cap of the 10,000. So if I go back on over here, and we saw that with the state taxes. It's likely that you end up hitting that cap if you have a lot of basically uh, the property taxes. So for example, if I went back on over here and I said my state tax from, from the wages withholdings was uh, 5000 And I go back on over to the forms. Now I've got 10500 that would have been deductible except for the cap that took place of the 10000 So So, and I bring that up here because you're going to link those two things together, typically mortgage interest and you're thinking about property taxes. So I'm going to take that back down. Take that back down. Take that back. You take that back. Okay. Now the next thing that can be a little bit confusing are the concept of points. Now points uh, were were as a kind of as a type of thing that kind of kind of developed within within the making the deal for the purchases, and you can think of them oftentimes as basically like prepayments of the of the interest. 
but it can get a little bit tricky. It's getting kind of more and more standardized, so it depends. So usually, oftentimes, they'll report it here in line six. But if you read the instructions for line six, just let's take a look at them. Line six, not all points are reportable to you. Box six shows points you uh, shows points you or the seller paid this year for the purchase of your principal residence that are required to be reported to you. Generally, these points are fully deductible in the year paid, but you must subtract seller point seller paid points from the basis of your residence. So that's generally if you got them in here then it would be a fairly straightforward we could basically enter the points now then in the in the time frame that you have the purchase that take place you might take a look at the closing documents or when the refinance happens to see if there's any other kind of points that you might be able to take and it's possible that they they put something under the term of points that aren't deductible like the, like that would be if they're not basically prepayments of interest and it's possible that you would have to amortize in some instances uh, the points over the life of the loan and you might have to you know scour through the closing documents to make sure to pick up any of those items on there otherwise it would be fairly straightforward if here and we can go back then to the forms and we can say okay let's go to the points item and i'm going to go then to the to the deductions for the schedule a and then they got the home mortgage and points on form uh, 1098. So you could basically, I can include the points here, points that could be included, and then we can make that adjustment. Now, if you had to amortize the points, it gets a little bit more tricky. You basically have to then, it's kind of like a depreciation schedule. So you could go into the, to the deductions and you'd go into the, in this case, and I'm just showing you how to do it in Lacert, but it would be the same kind of concept that you would be taking the points over the life of the loan, in essence. So I'm basically going to say we have points. I'm going to say they're going to go into the form Schedule A for the points. The category I'm going to say is amortization. I'll say the points started on 1121. Cost I'm going to say is a 1000. We're going to say the method will be the let's do the straight line on the method and then the life or class or how long this is going to be would be the, the the term of the loan and let's say it would be something long oftentimes like 15 years or something because if we're if like 15 or 30 years depending on the loan that we took uh so that's why it could be a, a fairly small amount for over a long time period to be nice if you could take the points uh, in the current period if that was something that would be possible to do to, due to the fact that you have to amortize it over such a long uh, time frame so if i go back on over so now we've got the 7001 here and then we've got the points uh not reported to you on form 1098 so remember these would be the points that would not be reported on the form here because if they were reported here then you typically uh, get to take them unless there's some kind of exception on that were on the form so then I can take a look at that schedule. Let's take a look at the schedule down here for uh, the depreciation for 2021. And you can see it's a straight line, you know, calculation for the depreciation. If I pulled out the trustee calculator, we're saying that it's going to be 1000 over 15 years. There's the 67 right there. So there we have it. Okay, so there's the points. The next thing we might see is mortgage insurance. And again, that should be fairly straightforward most of the time here reported on the form 1098. So you could go down here and say, okay, on 1098, we've got the mortgage insurance line five. We can always take a look at the instructions and get more detail on that. Uh, if an amount is reported in this box, it may qualify to be treated as deductible mortgage, deductible mortgage in, uh, interest. So it's gonna go in the same kind of category in the schedule A, in other words. So if I go back on over and say, okay, now we've got the mortgage insurance, qualified mortgage insurance. Let's say that was $1,000. And then I go back on up to the forms, on to the Schedule A, on to the Schedule A. And now within the interest, we've got the mortgage insurance of the 1000 Now note that there it there is a cap on the mortgage insurance. So if it goes over 109000 I believe, then you're going to lose uh, the deductibility of the mortgage insurance. So just to check that out, and that's for the that's for the single filer. And then it's it's fifty four thousand for married filing separately. So let's take a look at it. We're going to go over here and say, okay, let's bring the income level up to like one hundred and ten. 
110,000 and then go back on over just to check out that cap and you can see it goes away right there right so it went away so we don't have the deduction uh, at that point so remember with the mortgage insurance you might get a question like that they might say well what about mortgage insurance is that going to be a beneficial thing for me if i need to pick that up in order to make the deal happen you you will if your income is below a certain threshold that uh, then you then you typically get the benefit on that going back on over let's go to then the client information and let's say they were married married filing jointly still at the 100,000 picking up then notice I'm not itemizing now because now the standard deduction is still over even with the information we put in the mortgage interest and the taxes so 25,100 but if I go into schedule A and check that out for the interest still not there so we still got that cap at the 109,000 if I bring down the wages then married filing joint bringing the wages down let's say back down to 100,000 100,000 and then going back to the forms so now we've got the 1,000 back in play okay let's go back to where we were before I'm going to go back over I'm going to go to the client information put it back to the single filer so we're going to be itemizing again back on over to the schedule a which is now being populated because it's greater than the standard deduction. Now the next thing you would have is possibly investment interest. And you gotta be you gotta be careful with investment interest because investment interest is interest paid on money you borrowed that is, is allocable to property held for investment. So you got that same kind of concept, of course, with we're we're using that money to generate revenue, which is why it would possibly be deductible. Uh, it doesn't include any interest allocable to passive activities or to securities that uh, guarantee tax exempt income. So you got to keep aware of those kind of exceptions to it as well. So we're going to put then the investment. Uh, what did I say? Investment interest. Let's put the thousand here and I'm going to take this thousand away up top and then go back on over to our forms. So now we've got the investment interest which may need to be netted out against investment income. So you can see down here, the investment interest attached form 4952. So if I go to form 4952, 49, that's not the right one. So, so there it is. And so we, we, we have a carry forward at this point in time because it was disallowed. Let's say that we had say income on the income line, which was let's say dividend income div income let's say two thousand and two thousand and go back on over to the forms and so now we've got some two thousand of of uh, property held for investment and so now we're picking up that that interest and taking that here now so if i go back on over to the schedule a now we see the interest the interest investment interest attached here on the 1000 which of course flows through to the 14546 flowing through to the form 1040 so there's the 14546 there